What's going on guys? It's CTA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox news video. Today we're proud to announce that LaunchBox 9.8 has been released. Ton of fixes, lots of improvements, and some awesome new features we need to go over in this video. Like always, we do post a change log over on the LaunchBox website. I will leave a link to that in the description so you can read through everything that's been fixed, improved, or added. I'm just going to go over a couple of these fixes and improvements, then we'll move on to the new features. First up, RetroArch Netplay was broken in 9.7, it's now fixed in 9.8, so if you're into Netplay with RetroArch, you can go ahead and start using it again. Viewing PDFs with the internal PDF viewer now zooms much more quickly and smoothly. In the past it was a little jittery, but now it's super smooth, so you shouldn't have any trouble with that. Nested playlist performance has been improved when combined with custom fields, and LaunchBox screenshots and games detail sidebar are now in order based on your screenshot priority settings. Now it's time to talk about the new features. One that I'm really excited about is the newer GOG installed games importer. Now this is going to make importing your installed GOG games super simple. So we'll move over to LaunchBox. I'm going to head over to the options, tools, import, GOG games. From here, I'm just going to find my GOG folder. Click OK. I'm going to set this up as Windows. It's going to scan that folder, find my GOG games. I have The Witcher 3 installed on this drive. Click Finish. It's going to import it for us very easily. So this method here is only for installed GOG games, so we don't have to worry about anything that's not installed from GOG Galaxy or whatever you use to install those games. So I'll go to Computers, Windows, got Witcher 3 imported from GOG super easily. Next on the list is something that a lot of people have been asking for for a very long time. We now have pause screens in LaunchBox and BigBox. Now I'm going to show you how to use this, but you got to remember that every single emulator isn't supported yet. We do have a list over on the forum. I'll leave a link for this in the description. We have the emulator. This is the emulator name, 1964. That's the N64 emulator. It's untested. If you guys want to test it or write a script for it, feel free to do so. You can also reply to this thread here, let everybody know if it works or if it doesn't work. Some emulators may be missing from the list, but a majority of the very popular emulators are working with the pause screens. We're going to move over to LaunchBox, and I'm going to show you how to use them. From within LaunchBox, we're going to head over to Tools, Options, Game Pause. Now this is specifically set up for your keyboard in this section here. I have my pause key set to P, you can set it to whatever you'd like, but keep in mind that some emulators might use that key for a different function. I had that issue setting it to B with Dolphin. It would pause the game, but when I went back into Dolphin, it was minimized, and that's because the B key is set up to minimize the window in Dolphin, so keep that in mind. I've set mine to P. Seems to work really well. We also have Enable Fading. I'm going to leave this on. We'll go to Legacy. Game pads, joysticks, automation. We have a new automation button for pause. So I usually always hold my select button, that's going to be button 7 on my Xbox One controller, and I'm going to press start for show pause screen. So when I hold select, press start on my controller, it's going to pause the game for me. I'm going to click OK, and we'll get right into it. So here I am with Arrow Fighters 2. This is actually running in MAME. I'm going to hold select, press start, because those are the hotkeys I set up. Resume game, reset game, save state, load state, exit game. I'm just going to resume the game here. Everything stops, sound pauses, and I even set up fade with the pause screen, so it will fade out. I think it's awesome. Go to exit game. It'll bring us right back into launch box. So that's a really awesome new feature that works in LaunchBox or BigBox. This is for premium users. Keep in mind that not all emulators are supported at the time of release. Check that list. Link will be in the description. And finally, two new features for BigBox. Now this is going to help out anybody who's using an arcade stick that uses an encoder that's keyboard based. A lot of these encoders out there from Ultimark and a ton of other companies use keyboard keys inside of here. 
Now, in the past, it's been a little hard to set up three, four players in LaunchBox, but now with 9.8, it's very easy. We're going to go to Options. We can now bind up to four keys per action button. So here we have up, down, left, right. I have it set up on my arrow keys. W, I'm going to press Enter. I'm just going to do a random one. We'll do I, and we'll do U. So now, if I want to go up, I can use my up arrow keys on my keyboard, W, I, or U. And this works with each one of these. So this is going to make it much easier for people to set up their four-player arcade sticks with LaunchBox. Plus, we've also added keyboard automation along with controller automation. So pretty much the same thing here. If you're using an arcade stick and the encoder is based on keyboard inputs, this is going to make it much easier to set up. We also have show pause screen right here with keyboard automation. Really easy to set up. I just hold my A key and I press Z to get into my pause screen. And you can set this up any way you'd like with a keyboard. So that's keyboard automation and new keyboard mapping for Big Box. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. We really appreciate you watching and hope you enjoyed LaunchBox 9.8. Definitely try out those pause screens because they're absolutely amazing. If you guys have any questions, let us know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.